I'd like to call the September 11, 2023 meeting of the Hadley Capital Planning Committee to order. And the uh, first item of business, I would like to welcome our new member, Bill Bannock. Uh, thank you very much for volunteering to join our committee. And I think you will enjoy it. And we'll have a lot of fun along the way too, right, everybody? Oh, yes. It's a blast. Right. Uh, I know... Uh, you know, at our last meeting, we had somebody take in minutes, but I didn't ever see any minutes come through. So I guess we're going to have to defer acting on that until our next meeting. But uh, for this meeting, do we have a volunteer who's willing to take minutes for the meeting? Not all at once, please. please. I can go back and pull, pull minutes from the uh, recording after the fact. I could send a transcript. I could do that in my editing software. Okay, that works. Okay, for this meeting too? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, I think the uh, first item of business that we would want to uh, review is to have uh, Linda Sanderson, our treasurer and uh, finance officer, go over the fiscal year 22 special town meeting request for capital items. And, you know, Linda, thank you so much for the, 20, the, the ones before us now, Paul, the 24 ones. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, if you wanted to go over anything from 23, that would be great too. But also before you start too, I really want to thank you for putting together this package. It's, it's really a nice package. It's very helpful. It's nice to get it in advance. So, we can all properly prepare for this meeting. So again, thank you for your hard work and effort. It is noticed. Well, thanks, Paul. I am aware that we've got um, we've we've got presenters here that would want to get back uh, that we want to probably move through. Um, I think Mike Mason's actually on his feet uh, ready for something. Um, so. I would be happy to pull up the 24 requests and just show what we're going to go through today and what's what's on the agenda. And then you might want to move over to the presenters. And if we want to then send circle back and do uh, some background with just our committee members on FY uh, what what happened last fall and where this fits into our plan, would that be all right with you? Sure, sure. Especially if people do have uh, time constraints, you know, more than happy to uh, take that into consideration. Okay, let me let me see if I can jump to uh, sharing then the. And for presenters, we have this Mike and uh, Hadley Media presenting today. Okay, so is that sharing the? Once again, I'm not actually seeing it's, what you're seeing. Are you spread. seeing? Yes. The spread, the full spreadsheet on the capital requests. Yes. Okay. Everyone else? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, down the left-hand column are the different departments making requests this year. And then specifically in the second column, what they're asking for and the price uh, is under is in the 24 column here. As you see, we have over six and a half million, but it's a different, uh, but, but these will involve uh, mostly debt exclusion. So we're in a very different situation than we were last fall when we were squeezing um, the uh, almost $2 million worth of capital requests into funds to be paid for and borrowing to be paid out of the operational budget. So this is something that we're asking the town to go ahead and uh, please uh, approve these, go to a ballot and approve a tax um, a debt exclusion, which uh, we often also call it an override, but it, it's technically a debt exclusion, which would then raise the taxes to cover the payments on that debt during the time of the borrowing. So you can see that is our biggest request, $62 million in the middle. Uh, and we have here today, DPW, Jim Maximowski is the chair, who will talk about what's going on with DPW building. Uh, I see Chris Desjardins is here on the Hopkins, uh, the locker rooms renovations. They're about 500,000 each. Chris, I thought it'd be better if I just put the, that in as a single item. And Mike Spanknipple, if he's not here now, he was leaving the building a while ago and said he would hop on and talk about the ladder truck. So those are the biggies. So some of the, so some of the other ones, 
Uh, Mike Mason would be talking about the communications, uh, the backup plan for the state 911, uh, which is to be paid for out of free cash. Um, we expect to have over a million dollars in free cash this year, so we would we rather them move the cash into capital. When we think this is a this this is something that would just float there and either get used out of free cash or, as you see in the far the far column, we may get a grant to cover it. Um, and what else is the other item out of free cash is the town hall server replacement. Uh, it's actually a technical request for forty thousand, but twenty we're asking to come out of the budget. So our free cash eighty thousand dollars borrowing within the levy zero this year debt exclusion six point two million. Hadley Media funds. Uh, Alex is here to talk about the uh, what he, uh, the equipment he's looking for in Hadley Media. Um, other funding. I think we can we can talk about after. Oh yes, uh, Mike Mason also will cover this on the police, and we're going to sort of. Uh, go back and forth a little bit on um, uh, getting that back into the uh, budget for the first time, or well, not for the for the first time in a few years. But it used to be done that way. This is something that goes back and forth. It's probably worth a discussion um, amongst the committee here. Uh, Algonquin, we, we're going to try and get that money out of uh, select board, but that won't happen for a couple more weeks. So then again, the totals and all of the columns. Now, the one I sent to you, I think it was missing a total here, so it didn't quite work. So this is this is the new and approved one. I'd be happy to send out to you with uh, with the eighty two thousand in the last column. So that's that's sort of in a nutshell who we've got here today, what the biggest projects are, and how we would be needing to fund them. So Paul, if you want to take a look and see who's here or who needs to move out, do we still? Well, Chief uh, Mason, do you have to leave fairly quickly? No, no, not at all. I'm actually only standing because I got a stand up desk and I'm sick of sitting. So I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I know, Paul, I know that Scott needs to leave by three. Well, why don't we get Scott on board first then? Scott, are you with us? I am. Okay, you have the floor. Uh, I'm not the Algonquin project. I I believe Carolyn is gonna try to use Arbor money on that. So I'm not sure if that uh, reflects on this meeting or not. Uh, and then the DPW building. Uh, Jim is the chair, so I'm not sure if he's to talk to that or I'm, am I. Well, what is the Algonquin project, at least for my sake, then? If you would give me a little more so, detail. So, uh, yeah, we we uh, did some drainage work over there, and uh, I guess we weren't supposed to at the end of the day, and we got a, a you know, a fine from the DEP, and uh, we have to restore the stream bed uh, back to its natural way and take our pipe out that we put in. So it's a very complex drainage problem. So Scott, can I, can I just add a little bit more to that um, with, with just a little bit more background? So it was, um, because I think it's important that the public know who's watching as well as this committee know. Uh, that was a project that uh, was about two and a half years ago. We had a brand new conservation agent. Um, I, it was my first year and I think Scott's first year as DP, uh, DPW director. And there was a ditch over on Algonquin that was extremely deteriorated. In fact, there was such a concern that a neighbor or any of anybody in the neighborhood or kids would, could fall a significant amount. And it was, we felt it was a safety issue. So we did bring in conservation as well as um, members of the conservation committee um, to look at that. And we, we felt based on all of the information that it was an emergency and needed to be repaired. So it was repaired, um, but D, uh, it was an anonymous uh, person called to complain about it. So it was, we were found by DEP um, to have gone against um, obviously the Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, not obvious to us at the point, but as we look at it now when we're educated by DEP that, that there was an issue. Uh, so 
we have been working with an engineers, a group of engineers, as well as our town council to address it. So we haven't actually gotten fined yet, but we would get fined if we didn't repair it. The repairs estimated to cost around 100,000. There is some money left over in ARPA. If just to, as a reminder, that was money that we got with through COVID relief. Um, and we've actually um, done a couple of infrastructure repairs. And so Linda um, recognized that we did have some money left over um, in ARPA and suggested that we go to the select board, which we have not done yet, but we plan to do that at the next meeting to see if this would be better appropriated from ARPA um, to help fund this. In the meantime, we're also working with the legislators to see if there's any way to um, kind of uh, get some support for this to, to leave it the way it is, if possible. Um, the neighbors love it the way it is, but it is we have to follow DEP regulations. So there is still some things that we're trying to advocate for the for the town. Um, but right now, this is where it's lying. What we're so if ARPA wasn't there or the select board decide not to, we would have to go to town meeting to get funding for this. Okay, and this this is money to actually restore it to a yes. no state. I'm sorry, Paul. It would restore it to its original state. It would restore it to its original state in in better condition, but it would still go back down to that slope, it, it, which is right now we've covered it completely with 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 enhanced piping. If we restore it, then the the problem that was originally there is going to return. Or am I looking at this the wrong way? I'd have to have Scott answer that one. Well, it. it you would hope not, Paul, but you, you never know what, what, you know, water is a powerful thing. The flow of water, et cetera, could, you know, definitely make another problem there. But I mean, our hands are kind of tied with this. We're, we're under a uh, consent order from the state to do this. Correct. Now, P pen Carol pending, uh, like uh, Carolyn said, pending uh, fines, like our fines right now are technically on hold. But if we don't comply to this, we'll end up getting fined. Okay, and Carolyn, I heard you say that you're reaching out to the legislators to try to see if there's something they could do on their end, and is the DEP willing to defer on this action until there's a answer from the legislators? Uh, I could not answer. Not? Yeah, I couldn't answer to that uh, right now. We there has been initial discussion. Um, and I think we did hear back from both of them, but it was a little it was a little while ago. So we're we're regrouping this week um, to try to pull them back into the conversation to make sure that there isn't any any other options for us. You don't have a deadline, do you, Scott? To remediate? Uh, yeah, yeah, we we do, but it, it, it we keep uh, asking for extensions because we don't have our uh, our our design isn't one hundred percent completed yet, Ian. Uh, we don't have our funding in place to make a repair, so uh, the deadline uh, keeps getting pushed out a little bit. Like I said, we're, we we asked for extensions, and they've been granting them, but I don't know how long they'll uh, continue doing that. Right. And my line of thinking is that's why I'm asking these questions. If we have to remediate this and spend a hundred thousand dollars, and then Carolyn and you are successful in getting the state legislators to back off, then you know it's too late at that point. Or to get the DEP to back off, I should say. And then do we have to go back and do it again like you originally had done it to keep the neighbors happy too? The, yeah. neighbors, the neighbors actually love the way it is right now. That's the that's what's so right, discouraging. Right. Yeah, yeah like, well, like Car Carolyn said, it's kind of, you know, we're under consent order from the DEP if they're going to back off or not. I don't Real, I don't have an answer for that. I, I, at this point, no, they're not backing off. I can tell you that mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, but what's going to happen down the road, I don't know. But as of right now, they're not backing off. Okay. Well, hopefully you can defer this project until you get an answer from the legislators and whether or not they will be successful in their efforts. Right, other... if, it, if the select board approves it from ARPA, then we just hold on to the money. We don't spend it. If it goes to town meeting, town meeting would have to approve it out of free cash. 
so we just wouldn't spend it. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I think that's a good point. I, from what I've heard Carolyn say in the past, she's she's anxious to get an answer before we spend the money. So right. we will. We would rather, whether it's ARPA or free cash, we would rather not. Exactly. Well, I wish the both of you good luck on this. I hope it all works out without having to spend this money if the legislators are willing to address this with DEP. And does anyone else on the committee have any questions for Scott or Carolyn? Anything else, Scott, that you want to address with us? Uh, the only other thing is the DPW building and uh, Jim is the chair. So I'm not sure if Jim's going to speak to that or, or am I, I was assuming Jim was, but I'll be happy to. Jim will start, but Scott can put his two cents in as well. Okay. And uh, Linda, I was just like a housekeeping. Uh, no, I, I saw in one of your emails, you're talking about having Hadley media in the server today and then have a meeting next week with the uh, locker rooms in the DPW building. Is that still your game plan? Uh, at, at the DP, at the capital planning committee meeting yes. next week. Yes. I just wanted to have two dates. I didn't schedule who was at what I wanted to have two dates in case someone couldn't make it to this meeting. And also, and so to be sure that the committee had enough time to review the, uh, you know, back up and take the overview and, and, and take votes. So I don't have, I didn't really allocate anything specifically to either meeting. All right. And then I must have misread it because the way it said that would leave HA locker rooms and DPW building presentations for the second meeting. It might have been our initial plan before we forgot to tell people about last week's meeting. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <All right. laughs> no problem. All right. Um, anyone else for Scott? Any other questions? So do we want to go right into the DPW building now or go over um, some of the other smaller items first? Is Jim here? Let's, let's do the DPW building now in case Scott has to add anything because Carolyn said he had to leave by three. So let's get this out of the way. Okay, Jim and yes. Scott. Okay, the uh, DPW, on the DPW building, in case some of you haven't heard, where we are looking to upgrade, update, um, add to the existing DPW facility at the end of Middle Street which would include adding a new maintenance building, a office building, uh, relocate the salt shed, relocate the relocate and re re uh, replace the fuel pumps. And that is estimated to be a significant amount of money. Um, we're looking into getting some state funding for that. If that's possible, the state is looking because there's a lot of facilities in towns in the state and cities that are looking to do a similar project so there's talk that there may be some kind of a grant similar to the school grants that uh, the different towns and cities get in the state for cost, depending on income, you know, state will put in so much, the municipality will put in so much. But the first step required to do any of that is to get a uh, formal full design and a OPM hired to uh, design this facility design and upgrade this for the upgrade of the facility. And this $3 million would cover the hiring of an OPM and the design and hiring of an architect to design uh, the facility. We have a basic layout, but we would then have to advertise for a new architect to do this said design. And the OPM would be hired to put their two cents in uh, for the design. And that basic cost is estimated to be about $3 million. The total facility cost, if we it's spread out to be, um, we're trying to move it up because if we, the, the estimated cost, I believe for 2025 or 2026 is about $30 million. It's a significant cost. If we could bring it in sooner, we may be able to save several million dollars based on inflation. Um, so that's why we're looking to get a design today so that we can 
move forward with whatever the state may have for any possible matching grants. But this would only cover the design. What are the likelihoods of this program going through something similar to uh, SBAs for the schools? Do any of you have an update on that? I, I think uh, Chief and uh, Mike Mason and I could give you an update. So um, actually today they're doing public comment um, at the legislators at the legislative um, entity, and it's pretty aggressive by Joe Comerford for sure. It's called the Municipal Building Bill, and um, there's been a lot of advocacy. I know on small town administrators point uh, contact where we've sent in testimony about how important that bill is. If you guys have time before you end your day, I can give you the bill number and I can forward you the email. You can certainly um, send an email and why we think it's so important. But um, we won't we won't really know. But there is a lot of advocacy in Western Mass um, for this. Yeah, that that most certainly would go a long way because those numbers that you're throwing out, Jim, they're that'd be pretty tough for the town of uh, happy taxpayers to digest if we have to foot the whole bill ourselves. Well, I, I, I don't think a 30 million, 30 million dollar facility would fly in, would fly in town. I totally um, agree. So that, that's why we're looking to, if we can get the design in, you, know, you really can't apply for anything unless you have a design. If it's, if it's going to be like any sure. other grant project, you need to have a firm design ready to go so that if they give you the money, they want you to jump. So that that's where we're, that's where the three, three million is coming from. What will the grant money be? Would we get, we'd have to wait and see what would happen. What it would, if it's approved, what would the formula be? So the process is pretty similar to what you and I went through when we were on the school building committee uh, years ago. You know, well, we the, the process would be similar, but what would the, what would the formula be? That is an unknown. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, can I just really throw, just really quickly throw something out there? Obviously, it is for all municipal buildings, this bill that she's throwing out there. And so it includes public safety. And, and depending upon your timeline, would likely include your DPW situation. And they are the, the bill as written um, does say matching funds. So, you know, I, I don't know about the application process, but it does say matching funds. Um, you know, your DPW department is in trailers right now, as you know, um, and your public safety building was built when I was in junior high school. Um, so uh, and, and it's not, uh, you know, when we had to pull it apart in different areas to strengthen it when we were putting extra lockers upstairs because it wasn't built to hold the weight of a few extra lockers. Um, we were finding, you know, trash that was thrown down into the uh, into the uh, walls, you know, between the sheetrock from the guys that were building it and things like that. So your public safety complex has been in use 24 hours a day, seven days a week for like 28 years, 27 years, somewhere around there. Um, so, uh, you know, regardless of whether or not it's some, you know, this, this is attacked in the next few years, having this bill pass and having it be active in a few years, whenever you're ready to, uh, you know, do another public safety complex. This is the time right now to fight for it. Otherwise, we're going to be in dire straits because eventually, this building has to be replaced. So, just throwing that out there for those for those who have the power and the authority to, you know, send in written testimony uh, on behalf of the town of Hadley. I would I would suggest it. Where should they go to uh, Comerford? I. Whoops, yep. I'm sending you the link to right now, but I would definitely CC Joe Comfort and okay. uh, Representative Carey. Carey, mm -hmm. yeah. send it to me too, Carolyn. Yep, I'm sending. I'm looking on the screen. I'm sending and putting everybody on it. Okay, perfect. Let me just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, so I'm pressing the right. building. So she made it pretty simple. There's a link right in the email that you can click on and just kind of type in your your uh, you know your written testimony. As a, you could go there in person if you wanted to, but. Um, you know, the testimony I don't think is due until Wednesday. It's a real short notice situation. So if you're going to write something, um, you know, use the link and get something in. I didn't think it was my place to to put in for it because I don't have permission from anybody, um, nor, uh, um, you know, nor do I have any of the numbers that they might be looking for. I just have anecdotal type evidence. Uh, but it's something that, you know, certainly 
deserves looking at because it's a lot of money that, that could be on the table for us. Just as an also piece on the uh, DPW, DPW facility, there was plans to be an open house at the DPW facility on October 26th, probably something like from 10 to 2 p.m. Um, that will show... 14th, Jimmy. What? 14th. 14th. 26th is town meeting. Oh, okay. 10 14? Yeah. All right. I thought it was okay. 10 14, the open house. And uh, it will be at the DPW facility, kind of give you an overview of what the new facility would look like, get a little bit tour of what the current facility looks like and why a new facility is needed. Jim, could you clarify for the $3 million, would that would any of that be covered by the grant or is this something we have to do in order to qualify the grant? Uh, good question for Carolyn, I'm not sure. So you can't, um, what you need is the design to do the grant or okay. any type of additional funding. The OPM is part of that. You can't move, you can't, you have to include the OPM when you go out for architectural services. And if so that people understand then this has to be passed and go through debt exclusion, even if we had a, uh, in order to even apply for a grant for the large, for the building. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think that needs to be clear. And if it is modeled after the SBA program, then most likely this would not be covered as part of that yeah. the matching monies. Okay. Do you have anything to add to that, Scott? Uh, not really, Jim. I think you did a, you know, explain pretty much what we're trying to do here. It's just, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think the building's just getting too small and kind of need to do something. So, you know, first steps first, we need to design to uh, see if we can get the grant. I agree it's a lot of money for people to swallow, but if we could get the design done, it'd be a huge step moving forward if the uh, the bill goes through and there's some grant money available. And if this were to go through and you have the design, I would assume this would get us up close to the front of the line if that bill does go through. We'd be, we'd be hoping so. We would hope so, but it would depend on who it is and in, in, in also in line, you know, and how fast they act. It What's going to help, Paul, is that the design's complete. Um, mm -hmm. and the, But the other thing is, as you know, with the school, uh, a lot of it's based on a formula and some of it's based on medium income. Um, Hadley is higher than a lot of the other communities. So it, it if it's similar to the school funding, um, it's, it's looking at a formula that always isn't always advantageous to Hadley. So um, we have, just so you know as well, both Senator Comerford and Representative Kerry are aware that this building is in our future. So they are aware that um, we're gonna have challenges there too. So we've been having some discussions outside of that bill. Okay. For hiring the OPM, this covers the OPM and the architect just for the design phase only, correct? Not for the project phase? Uh, yes. Okay. You know, you know, David, to be honest with you, um, and Jim, I don't know, I would, I would have to look at that number if there's additional funding for the OPM with the con construction, because I think we were calculating the OPM based on the total cost of the project. So that may include the whole cost, David, but I can, David, I can, I can look at that. The, the 3 million includes an OPM for the duration of the project, an estimated cost. Okay. And I would think some of that three million might be included, might be covered as part of the bill if it if it gets approved, then we get a grant simply because the OPM is part of the project. So sure. there there's there's Good a little point. bit of a gray area there for sure. Yeah, it'll be interesting to get a copy if you could send that out to us, uh, Carolyn, of the actual proposed legislation too, so we could take a look at it. I just sent it. Great. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Let uh, me know if you didn't get it, because I'm looking at names here. <laughs> all right. 
Anybody else have any comments? Any other committee members or questions for Jim or for Scott? Okay, and Jim, I'd like to commend you and your committee for all the work you did on this. And I really very much appreciate that you're presenting numbers to us for the actual building that are in consideration of inflation at the time of construction rather than giving us today's numbers. And then we have to deal with a much higher figure three, four, five years down the road when it actually starts. So thank you. You're welcome. Hopefully, if we can, if everything falls in place, the number will actually be somewhat lower than the estimated total, but only time will tell. That would go a long way, of course. So, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, we would, Chief Mason, would you like to discuss your article now? Sure. Um, so, I'll keep it really simple. The communications project uh, is a computer, as most of you know. Um, the fire department has got their ambulance uh, up and running, and we are going to be handling what's called EMD services through our communications department. EMD is uh, emergency medical dispatch. So essentially, our dispatchers will be trained to talk people through emergency life-saving care um, on the phone until first responders can get to the scene. Um, there are different kinds of protocols out there uh, that will help dispatchers walk through this. These protocols sometimes are computer systems, sometimes they're flip card systems, but uh, all of them essentially help the dispatcher get through the call and also reduce liability on the town um, if something doesn't go right. So as long as you follow what this protocol is, the company itself uh, will cover any liability uh, if, there, if there is any for the town. It's mandatory to make sure that your dispatchers are trained in this when you do handle, um, <clears throat> when you do handle this type of protocol. Uh, so we do need the system to do it. So the good thing is, is that Every single year we apply for a state 911 grant and it includes training money to have uh, dispatchers trained in the mandatory areas that they need to get trained. And it also includes um, uh, it also includes what we call a support and incentive side of it, which will help cover the cost of some dispatch shifts to defray costs to our dispatch center. It will allow us to buy equipment that we need, new chairs, new computers, things like that. So we basically um, you know, we get from the state, depending upon the year, depending upon what we can prove, probably 30 to 40, maybe sometimes $50,000 from the state to cover all these costs. We see uh, the ability to get this computer-aided dispatch protocol from the state. We think that it will happen. We think we will be able to get it. However, because of the time frame of it, we really need this kind of a safety safety net here from capital uh, in the event that the state either denies us or um, you know they make us buy a dispatch protocol that is not going to work for our services which sometimes happens with the state they're a little weird with their money so that's all this is we we are pretty confident that um, the state will give us the money but we needed to have this in here for that uh, protocol and that's the, that's basically the cost for it right there. So this is like a plan B in case the uh, 911 grant falls through. Exactly. That's exactly correct. Just to add to that, um, there may be a plan. You may be a plan C. There may be a plan B in front of that. I'm supposed to be like meeting with the finance team um, because of our uh, decrease in our contract this year with action. Uh, there may be some funding available with that, but I'm supposed to be meeting with the finance team to go through that first. And is it possible it would be funded in part? You'd get a thirty thousand, so, so the sixty thousand is the full cost, correct? That's yeah, the full cost of the project. Yeah, okay, that's correct. So you you want a grant for sixty thousand, but if you got it in part, then if if the town meeting passes the full amount out of free cash, we would be able to take a portion of that to complete the project, complete the purchase. 
Right. Yeah, I think what Mike, I, I don't want to speak for Mike. I don't know what kind of uh, money he has to use as far as that goes. He may be able to fund the entire project, so right. which would really make capital a true plan C. So basically, we wouldn't have to worry about it two times over. If two, two things fail, then we would have to go to capital. Right. Okay. Even better yet. Yep. So uh, that's the communications one. And the police one, again, is also very simple. The only problem with the police one is that I haven't uh, been able to have a, a, a good conversation with Linda or Carolyn about uh, moving it back into uh, the operations budget. I can tell you that this is a standard replacement, as we usually put on here. And the only thing that I will say before I turn it over to the, uh, the two geniuses, um, the ones that know what they're talking about, is I support this idea a thousand percent. Um, I think that moving it back to the operational budget is the right thing to do. I won't have to bring it in front of capital uh, every single year now. Um, it'll get us back at least close to on track. The only thing that I will throw out there is that I'm not really sure the mechanics of how this works, but um, you know the timing of it is important because we are we are behind again. So we really, if we did move this back into the operational budget, we would need to make this purchase the same time of year that we would make it if it were a capital item. Other than that, I am I am all for this. And during our pinch years there in FY20 and around COVID, we decided we to start leasing the vehicles. So just paying about a fifth of them a year and it helped keep the budget down. And once you get into year or three of that, the savings starts to go away because if you're paying a fifth of five cruisers eventually you may as well be buying a cruiser a year a, uh, a cruiser a year and keeping the administrative costs and the interest costs on the leasing down so we think this is a good move to make at this point now that we have i think two cruiser leases we might be just getting into a third but i think this is the time because we do have uh we do have some available free cash right now and get this back in so we don't um we, we love the presentations and what's happening with all the cruisers every year, but that's, I, I think we can move past that now since it, it is something that my, that the police department seems to need every year and the uh, town has had no problem in supporting it every year. So I think it's time to just ease it into the budget and have it taken care of. So right. Chief, and if you can, I'm sorry, go ahead, Paul. Will there be years that you're going to have to buy two cruisers like we have done in the past? I mean, I, I don't foresee that right now. If we can if we can make this a guarantee uh, in our budget every single year, and if you can get it in in October or November or whenever the meeting is, and then it stays there for the July, you know, the next July budget, that will help us do catch up because we'll order that cruiser immediately, um, and you know we can kind of get back on track. If if uh, you know if we did need to order two cruisers in a year, to, if we fell behind for some reason. Um, obviously we would put that, you know, we would, we would talk that out and try and get that into capital. But I think doing this, um, will put us in a much better position to stay on track. So I don't see that happening at any time in the, in the near future, Paul. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for the chief? Okay. Thank you very much. And, uh, would you, you want to move on to, uh, would we like to move on to the fire truck, the Chief's Bank demo? That'd be fine. If, well, if, sure. So it's that time. <laughs> it's, uh, so our current ladder truck is a 2000 Seagraves. Um, we have taken very good care of it. And this request is kind of twofold. Uh, first of all, uh, I just received the estimate for this is if we get approved by prior to the end of this fiscal year or by the, you know, this year. Um, unfortunately, the air quality requirements for the engines for these trucks now have resulted in the ability to use the majority of the engines that they used to. So they're now backpedaling trying to get engines and there are next to zero engines available. We are looking at a minimum of 36 months to 38 months of build time uh, to get our ladder truck in. Um, so we are looking at, 
me probably not being here um, when we get it in, potentially. Uh, but we're we're kind of desperate, or else you're going to be looking at a potential increase of another hundred and twenty five thousand, or up to hundred and twenty five thousand, in addition on this two point one five. Uh, because of the cost of the air quality um, requirements that are coming through. I um, can also tell you that the 150000 that is slated in this now is in an attempt to um, keep us from having to move forward with, uh, basically it's uh, our Engine 3, which is a 2006 edition pumper. What we were looking to do is actually do a complete refurb of our current ladder truck which we are looking to uh, upgrade right now so we would do a refurb of that truck which would be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. that's what we've gotten in for estimates that would ensure that that truck is across the board new new lines new whatever it needs um and then uh, we could push off the need to purchase the 2000 and you know do the update on that next pumper so we would have two ladder trucks, which both are quints. So they are both pumpers as well. Uh, one, one would be up north, one would be in center. Uh, and that truck would certainly, uh, that engine one that we would do the refurb on, uh, would push us out probably another 10 years for replacement. Uh, we would also attempt to recoup some money by selling our engine three. Uh, so we would be improving uh, performance of the fire department, response times for a ladder, and it would also allow us not to lose a ladder truck when we have to send one out for service. Uh, so across the board for that, um, that would be a new, uh, we're looking at multiple vehicle makes right now to see what we can get the best deal on um, and what we need to actually build this out as a, we spec them for a 25 to a 30 year truck. So that's that's what we, have, we always do when we build these out. Um, so, that's that's what we're looking at right now. And so you're looking at delivery and fiscal 27, 28, if I'm hearing you correctly. That's correct. That's if so if we if it gets approved by the end of the year, there's the potential again. Linda and I had worked on this with our engine four, where if we make a specific payment, we can knock some money off of that initial cost. Um, but yes, we are looking at a minimum of a 36 to 38 month build out for it. That's how backlog there. And would there be any inflation added to this or this is really a set? This is the cost if you agree this, to it now. This is what I had requested. But again, this is if it's approved at town meeting. I know this is going to have to go to a ballot. Um, so if this goes in, if it doesn't get approved at the ballot and we go into next year, there is a potential of a, you know, an increase of another 125,000 for all the requirements under DEP for these trucks for air quality. Thank you. This, this is another one similar to our votes last fall. We get the approval, the town approves it, and he can place the order. If you were looking at three year lead time, we still get this price of whatever he whatever you're able to order it at. But we won't actually need the money, um, you know, unless there's a, an initial payment which would help us out at some point. But where technically we would not need the money until we were about to get the truck so we wouldn't be borrowing it for another two years maybe three years okay. which means paying it three or four years from now when our first bond payment will come due this is very likely going to go directly into a bond and be paid over 20 years or something like that maybe 10, 10 20 years we'll look at our situation then depends on the dpw building in part so um there's uh you know, this is again to address, well, maybe the six million is a lot in one year. Well, if that six is going to grow by putting it off, uh, we are putting it off by waiting. So let's what we're doing is by doing it now, we're getting the benefit of the of today's cost. That's good news to hear. So, uh, Chief, there wouldn't be any progress payments required on this. Is that what I'm hearing Linda say? It's all a COD at... <laughs> Yep. So the only, like I said, the only thing, like what we had done for our new Pierce, uh, well, 2017, I think it was, or 16, when we had bought our engine four, we were able to get a pretty significant 
um, reduction in cost by putting a down payment. I don't remember what the amount we put down, but it took off, I want to say 26,000 or 50,000. I, I don't remember what the amount was, but uh, that is something we could take a look at if we got a proof of that, if we wanted to put that down payment, but there wouldn't be any other payments required until we receive the vehicle. And again, it's it's very fluid right now with this. Um, again, they're the only motor. So the one company that we're, we normally go with to try and keep our trucks consistent, they they don't even have any motors available other than pack car motors. And uh, we're not even sure if, like, like again, if, if we don't get this in by the end of the year, they, they're not going to have any motors left for next year. So again, it could push that off even further. Um, so we're kind of, we're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. And I think that's why we also added in, um, you know, doing the refurb on our, this, our original engine one, because it's, it's prior to all the electronics and computers and, We've come. We've really kept this truck in prime condition, and the costs are going a little up a little bit right now. But if we redid all of what we're talking about for that hundred fifty thousand, um, we're seeing them on being able to push out that uh, the replacement of that next one in line by a significant amount of years, and then also getting money back for that truck, that engine three that we've had consistent issues with. So good. Hmm. If that made any sense, <laughs> it does. And uh, anyone else on the committee have any questions for the chief? And and chief, one kind of a minor question: Where would this be housed? So this this truck would be housed at our center station. And if we do the refurb on engine one that we currently have, which is also a ladder uh, pumper, that one would move up to North Station and replace our engine three. So we would have one true pumper, rescue pumper in our center, one new ladder, it would be a 105 foot quint. So we we kind of learned having purchased our original 2000 that we, we need the extra footage on our ladder truck. So it's either gonna be 103 or 105 footer so that we can actually reach some of these structures safely and not have to back into properties. Um, so we'll have, we would literally, we would be looking good for response for center, center of town and north. To have a ladder truck first due for, you know, as a pumper ladder is enormous. Good. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Chief. I very much appreciate the information and the thank great you. presentation. Chris, want to talk about the locker rooms? Sure. Um, these have actually been on our radar for quite some time. They're the original locker rooms from, I'm not quite sure of the history of the building, but either the 1950s or the 1960s. Either way, they're not what I'd call 60s. new. Um, okay. Yeah. And um, there's been some poor ventilation issues with the with the rooms. Back really when people used to shower in them all the time, there's a bunch of showers in the uh in the locker rooms that really go unused at this point in time. I mean, kids don't shower after gym class like they did 50 years ago, and it's just they don't get used at all. But what they do is they block visibility across the locker rooms. Um, so, you know, there's high walls and and those cubbies and stuff like that that, you know, if you're, say, a gym teacher or a coach, you really can't see across the locker room to everyone, um, which makes it a little bit difficult. And with the poor ventilation that they had in there, um, there's a lot of fixtures that are very, very rusty um, and really need to be replaced. And, you know, so what the what the plans were was to replace uh, lockers, the ventilate, uh, you know, the um, unit vents that are in there for the heat. Those are all rusty as well. Um, also, tear down the showers, remove them and open up the space to a much more usable space than what it was before um, for both the boys and the girls' locker rooms. Now, uh, is this uh, possibly subject to a SBA grant? It's possible. We did apply for one a couple of years ago, um, and we didn't get it. Um, I, I, can, I can ask. I'm not sure um, if this is something that is affected they put kind of a freeze on MSBA projects. 
Um, but I'm not sure if that was the energy portion of it or or the locker rooms as well. That happened last year. Um, we applied for this two or three years ago, but you know we could potentially apply again. And Linda, I got a question too. Didn't we discuss locker rooms a few years ago on capital planning, or am I mistaken? Linda, you're muted. And we yes, we've discussed it many times um, over the years. Um, I was on the town's first school council, which was appointed by Janice Slavka, I think in 1995 or 1996. And this was identified as the, by the students as the top priority, especially the girls locker room at that time. So this has been, this is way over, this has to be done. So just speaking from so many perspectives, uh, from, from where I've sat over the years, but um, I'm, I'm glad to see this on again. And I think that this point, many people who are voting on this project probably used either the boys or the girls locker room during their time here in Hadley or their kids have. So um, I hope we'll see approval on this. Does anyone else have any questions on the committee to Chris? Okay, hearing none, uh, thank you again, Chris. Uh, Great job and thank you. We will move on. I think we covered just about everything except the AV. This column. We have the AV. Jennifer's on for the I the, the town hall computers. And, and then Alex for his Hadley Media, the last the last two here. Okay. Sorry, you're gonna take off a few minutes if I can go next, um, if possible. Absolutely. Yep, Jennifer's not here anyway, so I'm going to cover what I can. So go ahead, Alex. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep it simple. We're asking for twenty-one, uh, a little under twenty-one and a half thousand dollars. Uh, come, it was coming out of our um, enterprise fund, so it's not coming out of free cash or mm -hmm. uh, any other ARPA type of deal. Um, it won't affect any of the other budgets. Um, <clears throat> so the, uh, the 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 um the cameras, editing computer. Um, and other things that we're going to be, we want to purchase, um, are going to go towards our goals, um, uh, for the capital quest that I came up with, which is going to facilitate better production value, um, bring more access to residents, be a social and educational hub, um, media hub that is, um, encourage more public participation of handling media. I think that's going to be the biggest one. Um, so we have an additional camera. We have an editing computer for the new, for our employee. Um, our Mac, um, our Mac computers. Uh, I think the oldest one is from like 2008 or 2010. Um, the editing softwares these days need uh, faster processors. Um, and these computers, besides this one I'm using now, cannot um, uh, handle that capacity that the uh, softwares use now. Um, we have, um, we have headsets, um, for people to use, whether it be for sports or parades, um, that sort of stuff. Uh, I think the overall goal of this capital is to bring us to another level of which we were from, we were at last year and just finish up that gap. And then hopefully we can encourage more participation with the community. So I think that's the overall goal. This is more uh, additional equipment rather than replacement equipment. Correct. Um, the replace replacement will be definitely the um, um, the computers, and then whatever older um cameras we have. That's the, those are the cameras we'll give out to the community to use. And that's pretty much substandard across many public access stations um with their procedures. Okay. Staff uses newer equipment. Community uses older equipment to start with. Anyone else have any questions? Okay, anything else, Alex? Nope. Okay, well, thank you. We appreciate the information. Very thank helpful. you for thank you for hearing me out. Okay, and Carolyn, you're pinch hitting? Yes, kind of. <laughs> Okay, um, go for it. So this is for, uh, we have some um, 
computer replacements that need to start uh, going into some, a regular schedule. So this is for 20,000. It says, you know, uh, Jennifer clarified with the notes and, and uh, Linda that when we say town hall, it really means all of the departments. So that's going to include COA, planning, library, et cetera. Um, so that's, that is 20,000 um, for what we would like to put in on an ongoing budget for our operating budget, similar to uh, our police. It's it's something that we're updating all of the time. I'm sure all of you work with computers, so we're always in that rotation that needs to be occurring. In the past, you've used an article and just kept that money um, kind of like in that article, you know, in that account and uh, um, paid for any upgrades or any additional equipment. So um, we both, Linda and I both think that would be a great place to, that it should be an operating expense. The other, th the other is a, a server replacement. Um, so I just want to, and so that's a twenty thousand dollar quote that has come from our who we outsource our IT services for. Um, but I just wanted to add that one of the things that we've been very fortunate with the assistance of the fire department, Chief Spanknable, has uh, recently hired a firefighter who's also um, IT municipal IT experience. So he has. I'm. I'm going to have him just take a, a another look at some of those uh, quotes that we're getting from Northeast to make sure that we're getting the best um, value um, for what we're spending. Um, I, Jennifer has done a phenomenal job being the gatekeeper for IT and making sure the town has been well um, uh, protected and, and kept an eye on things. Um, I just think it would be beneficial for the town to have uh, somebody in IT to take a look at all of those. Uh, so I, I would say that's the numbers we're working with. It would be great if we could get them a little lower and maybe we can and maybe we can't, but that's where we're at right now. Okay, thank you. So that would be treated like the cruisers would be part of your- operation. For the computer, for the computer, not not for the server. That would be a one-time expense. Right. How long, what kind of life do you get out of a server typically? I think it's five to seven years, Carolyn, I think she's been saying. I, I was going to say three to six, so I like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I think we've, we've pushed it out a little bit far this time because everything is still good, but I think maybe we've pushed it enough. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Any, uh, uh, another, any other comments or questions for Carolyn? Hey, hearing none, thank you, Carolyn. We appreciate it. Good job, uh, pinch hitting too. Thanks. <laughs> I think that covers everything, correct? That's everything on our list. So yeah, to summarize, if, if everything were to pass, there would be articles on that would pay for two items out of free cash. That would be the, the, the computer server and the, uh, and the uh, dispatch um, if, if the uh, the system, if the grant doesn't cover it. So mm -hmm. anything not spent would, would flow right back into free cash. We're not borrowing anything such as we did last fall, which was a lot of borrowing within the levy, which is a wonderful that we get to uh, ease up on, on um, the burden on our, our operating, um, what, what's piled up for payment in the operating budget. So that's that's gonna be great not to have anything new there. And if these do pass, the $6 million, if those all pass, then we will uh, certainly be going into town meeting and before that, um, even calculating what the uh, what the what will uh, the impact on the tax rate uh, would be so that people would know what they're getting into and uh, hope to have a, a good presentation at the town meetings. Um, Usually the, these pass at town meeting fairly well, knowing that the ballot has the ultimate vote. So we would like to um, make sure there is enough follow through, through on all three of these so that we get the ballot approval as well. Um, as Alex said, uh, his, his, his funding is just out of the enterprise funds, Hadley Media. Note there's nothing out of water reserve, water uh, enterprise funds or the sewer enterprise funds this year. You know, if you recall, how much we spent out of that at last fall town meeting. So we had said at town meeting that um, 
we needed to front load some of these purchases and get them ordered and that there would be a wait and that, that we would then be easing up hopefully this year, which is fortunately come to pass, that we're not pressing those same funds again. We're going to ease this up over, uh, give ourselves a, a break and try and catch up a bit. And then in our under other funding category, we have the ARPA project um, that um depending on select board resolution because uh, that if uh, the other al alternative for that is to putting it back over into free cash uh, if we still have to spend it. Uh, the cruiser is uh, is in the operating budget, we hope. We would increase that at town meeting. So instead of being in the capital article, it's going to be um, in the budget article looking for an increase. Either way, it comes out of free cash. So that's really, uh, it's just really how we're setting ourselves up for going forward. And the same thing with the computer. So that's about $100,000 worth of items that could be called capital if we wanted to do it that way and borrow. With the interest rates going up, it's making less and less sense to put smaller items like this, which is interesting to look at. This is smaller, but uh, as you look at the other columns, you can see that's become smaller. Um, to put those into a borrowing situation um, is is crazy. Um, if we had a capital fund, um, we could be spending it out of there. But again, we're kind of back in the same situation because we could take instead put free cash into this capital fund and then spend it out of the capital fund, where or we could just spend it out of free cash or put these into the budget. So I think that we've I think this has been set up in what I consider the most direct. Um, and uh, in most simplified version and hopefully comprehensible for people at town meeting and the easiest for us to all answer the questions on and explain. So that is, uh, that's really it. The, the requests, um, as they said, were respectfully um, low given that we uh, approved so much last fall. And I was, I was glad to see that it really did follow through. We, Carolyn wasn't calling anyone up and saying, remember what you said? I mean, they really just kept these requests at what was needed and, and that's what we needed as a town. So. Well, thank you very much, much Linda. I really appreciate it. Is it possible? I think uh, we're going to get together next week to further deliberate this and vote on it. So is it possible either for David or Dan, someone to come up with a potential tax rate impact on the big three projects here? I I think that it is. Is there anything more people want to discuss as to the merits of doing it this way? And because if there's general, you don't have to take a vote on it, but if there's a general feeling that, that yes, you know, we want that impact on all three, we can definitely have those ready. I speak for Dan. <laughs> I think the assessor's office has its hand raised. <laughs> He's volunteering. Um, yeah, I've already got some estimated yes. tax impact on these. Uh, I used a three and a half percent interest rate. I'm not sure if that's too high or too low. It's a little low. A little low these days. <laughs> uh, with a 10 year term, the DPW would be 140 a year for the average house. Fire truck would be about a hundred dollars a year, and the school would be about fifty dollars a year. So you're talking two ninety, probably about three three ten a year. About three hundred, yeah, about three hundred dollars a year for ten years for all three. And the DPW, you know, that's not kicking in until somewhat down the. Oh no, this money would be spent though. Yeah, that's just in the way, three million dollar, not the the thirty million. Exactly. Yeah. So that's an interesting way to look at it, too, Paul. It's not kicking in. So what would, I think the first one to get going would be the school. Do you know, uh, Chris, what kind of a lead time you'd be looking at of the, for the locker rooms? Is that something you could start next summer? Uh, we have a lot of projects going on. I don't know if we could pull that off. There's, there's a lot of bids and stuff to uh, to do with this. It might might be delayed after that. Okay. So if, so if I can ask if, if we're you're counting on it being possibly two years out, does it make sense to try to get the money now that since we won't know what it's actually going to cost in two years? Well, we built an inflation factor into the totals that you see for this coming year. Um, like I said, we can try you know to get it in by the summer. It's just it's it's pretty tricky to get these things done. 
because uh, contractors are just so straight out. You know, I just don't know that we'd be able to go through the entire process and, and get it going by the summer. We can try, but I'm, I'm not saying it would be like the following summer. It, it could be, you know, started over winter vacation or something. You know, I'm not sure. I'd have to ask a contractor how noisy and, uh, I guess, distracting this work would be in the locker rooms. You know, it's over on a wing where there's not a lot of classrooms or anything, so that's a help. Um, but I, I, I'd have to check with them first to see if it's something we could do in the school year or if we'd have to wait until the following summer. I can certainly do that, though. Well, and also the cost might get affected impacted in a good way if there is some SBA money there available that you're going to look into. Right. So that'll be great. So um, as part of what it was Randy kind of asking about just go ahead and borrow anyways. Is that what you were? Because you said something about getting the money now anyways, Randy, am I misunderstanding what you were no, saying? No, yeah, you're misunderstanding. If, oh. if, if we borrow the, if we get the money now and then prices go way up, then we're going to end up having to, you know, come back and ask for more money. Right. Okay. So right. I'm just concerned about that. That's all. All right. So why don't we uh, plan on meeting next week and we will deliberate further and discuss further and take some votes. Sounds like a plan to me. Excellent. Everyone else? Please, please write to me or Carolyn or any of the department heads who've made um, their presentations. If you have any questions that would help you uh, with your vote next week um or um or if you want to ask any of us well carol and i will be there but if you want to ask a department head to come uh to come back uh, some of them may log in anyways just they want to hear the discussion but um it would be helpful to know any concerns that you have or questions that you have a hundred uh, ahead of time so that we could make sure we have good answers as you uh, discuss and make your decisions next week well thank you for that offer too linda that's appreciated just like the information that you'd sent out to us earlier for today's meeting was very helpful too. So uh, why don't we plan on getting together? Anyone else have anything to add? Let's plan on getting together two o'clock next week. It's at the 18th, I believe. And do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye.